Hello and welcome to another installment in our AnyNode video tutorial series. We invite you to sit back and watch this video to learn more about remote access to the AnyNode front end. In this video, we're only going to present an encrypted connection. The maintenance and administration of AnyNode can take place from another computer within a corporate network by enabling remote access. First, we want to point out that the user management needs to be enabled for remote access. This is the default setting in a new AnyNode installation. Next, we will go to Extras and then Web Server Settings. Here, you can see that a connector is already activated. The default port on a Windows system is 8088 on the local host. When using operating systems without a graphical user interface, a connector with an IP address that can be reached from the internal network is usually created during installation. The Windows installer only opens port 8088 on the local host, so that only access via the computer itself is possible. Here, we add a connector on which the web server and thus the AnyNode front end can be reached. By clicking Add, the Web Server Connector Assistant starts with the query whether we want to use an unencrypted connection or an encrypted connection via HTTPS. In this video, we will focus only on the encrypted connection. We need to point out that an unencrypted connection is a security risk and should only be used for internal testing purposes. At Network and Port, the IP address to which the web server is bound is queried. In this case, we select the network card of the local AnyNode installation. The IP address will be displayed to us immediately. We must now set the IP address on which AnyNode should receive the requests. The settings should not be chosen so that multiple IP addresses come into question because then AnyNode takes a random IP address. With the network card set, the associated port is not opened on all possible IP addresses. In this input field, you can set the port on which any node accepts the requests. Since this is already preset by the assistant with the default port for HTTPS 443, you normally do not have to change anything here. The Certificate and Private Key Assistant offers several options for certificate management. If you want to use your own local CA and the TLS connection stays within a corporate network, the first option is the simplest and fastest solution. To request a certificate, the Active Directory is queried on the server of the domain controller where the CA responsible for requesting the certificate is located. Subsequently, a connection to the CA with the access data is established. The wizard automatically finds the appropriate Windows domains and the associated CA or machine on which the CA is running. Here, the user must have authorization for the request to Active Directory. Therefore, we enter at this point the user credentials. Click on Locate Certificate Enrollment Server to execute the request immediately. The status shows after a few seconds whether the connection to the server now exists. The next step is to read out the certificate templates provided by the CA. The list shown here is not representative and may be different depending on the user account. We need a web server type template with server authentication for any node. A template for it should be available everywhere. Subject. Enter the host name of the system for which the certificate is intended. The wizard has already made all the important entries here automatically. Subject alternative names or SANS. If the system can be reached under several host names or IP addresses, additional host names, IP addresses, or email addresses for which the certificate is also valid later can be added here. When using an IP address, it should be fixed, not dynamic. Key size. Here the desired key length can be selected. Larger key lengths are generally safer, but generating the key may take longer. In the last step, the certificate is requested. You will receive a requirement overview here. The success of the request depends on the settings of the administrator of the CA. 
Upon completion of the request, the generated certificate is displayed. Connections to remote sites are accepted here if the remote stations can offer a trustworthy certificate. The trustworthiness is always stored in the CA. At this point, we can choose whether the web server requests a client authentication. The web server thus ensures that the remote station is really the right remote station. We do not use client authentication here. The wizard has already enabled the default settings TLS 1.0, 1.1 and 1.2 for the security protocols. If you want to disable the already deprecated protocols TLS 1.0 and 1.1, you can do so now. We recommend using the HTTP redirector with port 80 unless this port is otherwise used. This has the advantage that then all requests that arrive unencrypted on port 80 are redirected to the encrypted connection on port 443. We now get the correct URL starting with HTTPS already displayed. Any node asks which of the possible connections you would like to have as a prefix. It is useful to test the new connection here. For our encrypted remote access, we now use the HTTPS URL and start the AnyNode front end on another computer. With Take Control, we can obtain write access. Finally, we would like to point out once again that remote access to the web interface of any node should be possible only via your internal network. Public access is definitely a security risk that you need to avoid. We are now at the end of this tutorial video. We thank you for your attention and your interest in any node. Have a wonderful day.